cheeky, aren't they down there? Well, more now on the escalating crisis over the coronavirus, and Treasurer Josh Frydenberg joins us now. Treasurer, good morning to you. Nice to be with you, Carl. Yeah, first up, um, almost 250 Australians trapped in quarantine on that cruise ship off Japan um, for at least two weeks. Boy, oh boy, that's a haul. Uh, what help is the Australian government going to be offering them? Oh, look, we're in close contact with them, and obviously uh, what we will do is ensure that all Australians are getting the support overseas that they need. We've put in place uh, travel restrictions, as you know, to uh, protect the Australian public from the evolving coronavirus. We've got 14 cases. Uh, we've had 14 cases here in Australia. More than 20,000 people have been infected globally, uh, more than 400 deaths. So it's clearly evolving. Uh, but what we are doing is taking the best possible advice, Carl, from our uh, chief medical officer in order to protect the Australian public. Treasurer, we saw another case confirmed in Queensland overnight and today there are reports that you've identified abandoned mine camps as potential quarantine centres mm. for Aussies coming in from virus hotspots. I mean, does that suggest that you're expecting this crisis to worsen? Well, we actually don't know how, how long it will be sustained, how severe it will get. Uh, what we have seen in, with previous epidemics, like with the SARS virus back in 2003, that there was a hit to the Australian economy, that there was obviously, you know, real challenges when it was evolving, but uh, then subsequently um, the economy uh, bounced back quite strongly and that we also, uh, you know, we saw the threat diminish. So uh, we, we know that our best um, medical minds are look, working on a vaccine. For example, the Doherty Institute uh, for Infection and Immunity in Melbourne is working with the University of Queensland and the CSIRO on a vaccine. And of course, other uh, key, uh, key scientists around the world are doing their best too. So that's true. You're, you're, you've, you've identified abandoned mine camps uh, for, for the possibility of, of taking people there for quarantine purposes? Well, Carl, what we're doing is we're looking, obviously, for accommodation for, for those Australians who, who come back home but have been in China uh, since the, the travel bans were put in place. Uh, so the number of people who have this is doubling, um, I think, or, or contracting it is doubling every six days. Uh, can you give us a, an idea of the parameters um, about what you're planning for here? Look, I, I don't want to go into to the specifics of, of those numbers, but what we do know is you're right. Um, the, the, the number of people who have been infected uh, has increased. Uh, the number of fatalities has increased. Mm. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we've put in place these precautionary measures uh, to protect the Australian people based on the best possible medical advice. My job, obviously, as, as the Treasurer, is to ensure that the, uh, the economic harm to, to the economy uh, is mitigated mm. and th that it, it doesn't have the long-term effects. But let's look at that economic harm because our seafood industry has been brought to its knees. It's, it's costing our tourism industry a billion dollars a month. Many businesses are impacted. What help is the government offering? Well, you're right that the, it will have a significant impact on the Australian economy. That's because China is our number one trading partner. We have more than 200,000 Chinese students uh, here in, in Australia uh, last year. Um, what we've got is more than 1.4 million uh, Chinese tourists to, to, to Australia, and obviously that's all been of great economic benefit to our country uh, and to support the mutual relationship. So we'll continue to work with those industries. We're talking to, for example, the tertiary education uh, sector as to how they can mitigate the impact on their sector um, by, by these travel restrictions. OK, Treasurer, we, we now face um, legitimately our first quarter of negative growth in nine years. We're facing it. In the past year alone, as you know, we've suffered floods, devastating bushfires, we've had drought. Um, as Ali points out, tourism is suffering, um, universities now potentially losing millions. How can you possibly now make surplus? Well, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, Carl, uh, made his first major speech for the year yesterday at the Press Club and he said that the fundamentals of the Australian economy are very strong and that Australians can be optimistic about their future. And we've seen in the recent job numbers uh, that unemployment fell to 5.1%. It was 5.7% when we came to government. More than 1.5 million new jobs have been created. And the budget is back in balance for the first time in 11 years. And we've got the, we've got the benefits of the, the tax cuts flowing through to the economy. So don't 
right off the Australian economy. It's been enormously resilient. As for what you're talking about, the March quarter, we won't know those results mm. to June. So it's too early to speculate. What we do know is that the fires have had an impact on the economy. The ongoing drought is mm. having an impact on the economy. But because we've been disciplined economic managers, because we've brought the budget back into balance, we've got the flexibility to respond. For example, with the $2 billion National Bushfire Recovery Fund. Now, the Labor Party took the last election $380 seven billion dollars of higher taxes could you imagine whacking retirees and superannuants and family businesses and income earners with those taxes at the time we're battling fire flood uh, and uh, now disease well interestingly the, the RBA governor yesterday also said that climate change will profoundly impact the economy I mean you have very loud voices within coalition ranks you got Barnaby Joyce George Christensen I mean they want to open more coal-fired power stations how do you balance what he was saying yesterday within division within your own ranks well, we've got a target um, that we signed up to as part of the Paris Agreement. And Australia is actually doing much better in meeting um, that target than many other countries. That target is a 26% reduction by 2030 on our emissions levels in 2005. We're down about 13% uh, since then, whereas Canada is down by only 2%. New Zealand is actually up by 4%. China's up by 67% and India up by 77%. So we're actually getting on with the job of transitioning our energy sector to more renewables. One in five uh, Australian households have the solar panels on their roofs. Well, going to renewables is not exactly opening up more coal-fired power stations. That's what the National Party wants mm -hmm. to do. Anyway, a debate for another day. I, I want to ask you this before you go um, about help for communities and businesses impacted by the bushfires. Um, what are you announcing today? Well, we're continuing to roll out uh, programs, for example, the small business support um, that we're providing grants of up to $50,000, uh, grants of up to $75,000 for, for primary, indust uh, primary industry businesses that have been affected. We've obviously got the household assistance. Mm. So we've got $2 billion, which is initial and additional, on top of the existing allowances that we provide payments through the states to people who have been affected. We're going to be there uh, for the rebuild, and we'll make sure that we rebuild better into the future. Well, we've got floods on the way as well now. I mean, it's, it's challenging. Uh, it's mm. challenging, is to say the least. Um, Josh, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Good to be with you okay, guys. Okay, more on that.